Hey all, uh, my name is Janine. Um, I am the author of the Sudoku puzzle that you see on the screen here. Uh, you can find all of my social media down below as well as a link to the puzzle to try yourself. I'm making this video because uh, Cracking the Cryptic just uh, released a video where they attempted to solve this puzzle and Mark uh, in fact solved it. Though uh, he made a few bifurcation steps that I wanted to show everybody kind of how one might avoid those. So obviously spoilers for the puzzle here. Uh, click on the link below to try it for yourself. Um, and or go watch Mark's uh, solution of it on um, on his channel, which I'll also link to. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at the puzzle. So the rules for this puzzle are um, and it's got a little bit of uh, weird flavor that, that I put on it because because I like to do that kind of thing. Um, so it's like a windoku. And a windoku, normally, you have these four extra regions, which must all, also all contain the numbers 1 through 9. And this one is a little bit of a variant on that, in which one of them, you don't know which, is broken and does not contain all the numbers 1 through 9 and can contain re uh, repeated digits. So. You don't get to rely on some of the traditional tricks to use that you can use to make Windoku uh, a lot simpler, and I thought it was a, a nice chance to explore some of the other logic that these extra regions can can bring to the table. So uh, we got normal arrow Sudoku. So if you haven't seen arrow Sudoku before, this this bulb contains a number, and that number is equal to the sum of everything along its. Uh, its stem. So this could be 2, 3, 2, 5, for example. Um, so 5 has to be the sum of wh whatever goes here has to be the sum of these two. And we have some branching arrows here, which are going to get a little bit interesting in the solve. And the branching just means that these three have to sum to this, and also these three have to sum to this one. Um, OK, so again, if you want to give it a try, pause the video now. Uh, Go click on the link. Otherwise, I'm going to spoil everything for you and solve it now. So the first step is to notice that you've got these numbers here in all four of these corner boxes that need three different ways, or sorry, two different ways of summing three digits to them. Now, you can make six and seven out of three digits. Uh, seven is one plus two plus four and 6 is 1 plus 2 plus 3, but these need two ways, right? So 6 and 7 aren't going to work here, because if this was a 6, then I'd have to put 1, 2, and 3 into five different cells, and that's that's nonsense. Uh, 7 has exactly the same problem. So all of these have to be 8 or 9, and Mark actually got this uh, pretty much off of that. The other thing to notice is that one digit is shared. Now, for 8, the two ways of summing three numbers to 8, and you can use a cheat sheet for this sort of thing. Like, I, I know some people pride themselves on doing all this math in their head. Um, I definitely <laughs> cheat a little bit on, on these sum combinations because I cannot remember all of them. But the two ways of summing to 8 in three digits are 1, 2, and 5, and 1, 3, and 4. And the only shared digit between those is 1. So we have to have a 1 in here and here, or here and here. We've got this little x wing kind of thing with ones. And the second bit to understand is that 9 has actually three ways of summing. You can do one, uh, 2, 3, 4, um, 1, 3, 5, um, or uh, what's the other one? Um, One, two, six. That's the one. <laughs> but uh, two of those could share a two, or they could share a three. And so Mark had this pretty straight off the bat, and he marked one, two, and three in here, which is correct. Um, because there has to be two different ways of something. So nine, if, if, if we had a nine here, and we took one away from it, we still have to have two ways of summing with two numbers. So we can sum to eight with two numbers, we can sum to 7 with two numbers, or with two different combinations. We can sum to 6 with two different combinations. Um, 
And as soon as we get to five here, well, it can't be a five in this particular spot anyway, but just in general, you'd have to have uh, two ways to sum to four here. <laughs> Um, or rather, yeah, two, three, and then one, four, and then this this doesn't actually work. So, uh, correct in saying that these were one, two, and three. However, three actually poses a bit of a problem. It's a bit of a subtle problem. So, if this is not necessarily a nine, but one of these is a nine, and next to it have to be eights. And if we put a 3 here, then one of these has got to be 2, 4, and the other has got to be 1, 5. And either way, you can kind of see the 2 and 4 here pose a problem, because the 8 has to be paired with a 1, and these have to sum to 7. Well, they can't be 1, 6, and they can't be 2, 5, and they can't be 3, 4, because the 2 is already taken up, and the 4 is already taken up here. So this being a 3 just does not work. Um, and you can see that kind of... The, the thing attached to a 9 cannot be a 3. That, that just doesn't work. And you can see that just by looking at the adjacent 8. Um, and a number of commenters uh, found that as well. So that's kind of cool. Um, so what's the next step? So because the 9 has to be paired with the 2, we don't actually know that's a 9. That's an 8 or a 9. Um, because the 9 has to be paired with a 2 and an 8 with a 1, we know that these little wings here all have to add to 7. Now, there's only a limited number of ways to sum to 7, and you can kind of see that these all interact with each other in some way. Um, so the first thing to realize is that one of them in every box has to be 3, 4. So the 9, 2 here, there's only two ways of making this happen with a shared 2. So we can make because we have to make a sum to 7, we can't include 2. So we can make 3, 4, and 1, 6 in some order. It could be the other way around. But either way, we have to have a 3, 4. And similarly, if we have an 8, 1, we have to have a 3, 4, and a uh, 2, 5. Because we can't have 1, 6 now, because there's a 1 there. So, Okay, that's nice, but you see the 3, 4 has to appear in every single one of these boxes, so it actually has to make this little spinny spiral pattern here. And the things on the other sides are going to be 2, 5, or 1, 6, but the 2, 5s are going to appear opposite each other like that, and the 1, 6s are going to appear on the opposite branch, right? Because the 2, 5 has to be aligned with the 8, and the 1, 6 has to be aligned with the 9, and they do have to go in the spiral pattern. So this is actually very, very restrictive. We still don't know which way these sort of spiral patterns um, collapse, but we can, we can speak sort of broadly about some very tight restrictions on this. So the next bit is to do some arithmetic. Now, you, you might notice that these, these rows, sorry, uh, these rows here, do and these columns have a lot of known sums in them. So we know that the wings here all sum to seven, and we know that this this is an eight nine pair, so it sums to seventeen. And if you do the math on that, of course the column has to contain all the numbers one through nine, and therefore sum to forty five. You realize that you've got seven, or sorry, 14, <laughs> excuse me, 14 left to go in here. Now, if you combine that with a realization that Mark actually made in the video, I think let's actually back up and, and make that realization for ourselves, which is seven can't go in any of this business, right? Seven is just too high to, to work here, right? Seven, one, two would be the minimum that already makes 10. So seven can't be in any of this business can't be in any of this business, right? And so it has to be in these regions. Now you can also do, um, there, there are some ways to apply X-wing logic to this. 
um, and eliminate these corner cells, but you actually don't have to do that right now. Let's just not worry about that. But you can see that two of the sevens, that both sevens in, in columns one and two are taken up. So the seven in this box must be in, in here. I mean, it can't be there, but it has to be there. So there need to be four sevens kind of like this. Um, you can use Fistemafel's theorem for this if you like, but you can also just kind of see um, by going around the grid that seven has to be in both of these highlighted regions. And so seven can't be in there, it can't be in there, so it must be somewhere in here. And similarly, seven can't be in here or in here, so it must be in here. Right. So we've got these regions all containing a seven, but we also notice that they <laughs> must sum to 14. So they contain a seven, but then they also contain a way of summing to seven, right? Because the remainder of 14 with seven is seven. So there are exactly three ways to sum to seven, which is exactly what we're representing here. We got one way to sum to seven, another way hidden in here somewhere, and the final way here. So in fact, we know that the three fours are in this spiral pattern around the grid, either this way or the other way. So that way of summing to seven can't be a three four pair, right? Because no matter which way that you did these three fours, you can't put three and four in here because one one wing or another will um, will rule it out. So we we can eliminate three four from all of this. But what other ways of summing to seven can we eliminate? Well, aside from the three four, whichever direction it appears in is going to be a two five in one direction which if it was in this direction, it could be in the other one, the other direction like this, two five and two five. But either way, it's gonna be here. They're, they're gonna be vertically aligned where, wherever the two fives appear. So it, it, in this configuration, these can't be two five and these can't be two five. So they're gonna be along this uh, sort of, they're gonna be vertically aligned like this. And similarly for 1, 6, 1, 6 does exactly the same thing. So if you have 1, 6, 1, 6 is going to be opposed in some way, either vertically or horizontally. So if these were 1, 6, we would end up with 1, 6 like that. Um, and then finally, if we had 1, 6 like this, they have to be opposed, remember, like this. Then they would end up like this. So these are 2, 5, and 1, 6 kind of up. They're 2, 5, 7, and 2, and 1, 6, 7 in opposing uh, configurations, if that makes sense. And you, like, you have to kind of stare at the grid for, for quite a while to, to realize that, but there's, there's this sort of spiral pattern that, that kind of fixes it all in place, right? Whichever way you fix the three fours, like let's say we fix them this way, um, you have to have one six and two five um, somehow ruling out, ruling themselves out of pairs of these, right? And because of this five, this this given five is the first given that actually really helps you. You know that the two five seven can't be up here. So we don't know anything about these wings in what order or configuration they're, they're in, but we can actually place a 257 triple here. Sorry, the other one. 167 triple here, because that's the only way left of summing to 7. Uh, 167 triple here, and 257 triples out here. So once we've done that, we can eliminate some obvious things. That can't be seven. Um, these also can't be seven. Um, and now we have to start relying on the panes. So we know only one pane is broken. And actually, you can already see that seven in this box 
can only go here or here. And seven is excluded from the entire rest of these, of both of these two panes. So between these two panes, you only have one seven, which means one of these has to be broken. Um, and that means that we can rely on these. Um, okay, cool. So what do I do next? Um, but uh, it's two nine. If that's one six, right? And this is going to fix the order of everything because two five can't go in here. Ah, right. Uh, so 2-5 can't go here, and 2-5 can't go here. Why can't 2-5 go here? Because this can be neither 2 and 5, and these two have to be the same digit. Um, they have to be the same digit because this equals, the sum of all of these equals the sum of all of these, and if you subtract off of these two, then they have to be the same digit. And if this was a 2-5 pair, then we'd have either 2, 5 here, and we would break this triple here. So we can't have 2, 5 here, and obviously we can't have 2, 5 here because of the triple. So this has to be a box without the 2, 5 pair on the wing, which means it has to have a 1, 6 pair on the wing, which means it is a 9, and that is a 2. And that's going to resolve all of this business over on the grid. So we know just from, from these guys how to resolve the, uh, the eights and the nines. We still don't necessarily know where the three, threes and fours are going, except we kind of do, because this is going to decide it for us. This box must have a two five on one of the wings, and it can't be there, so it has to be there. right? So we got a three four, and then we can fill in all of those fun three fours around the grid. But like, in, in order to disambiguate that, you kind of have to see, you have to do the arithmetic and see that you need another seven sum in here and they have to be horizontally or vertically opposed in that way. Um, so this is gonna be two five, this is gonna be, well, one six, but you can resolve it with that one there. Uh, in fact, this five two is resolvable as well from this guy, um, and this one six as well. Oops. Excuse me, like that, uh, as well as this. So that's an incredible amount of progress. Um, and now we can ask ourselves, because we know this pane is unbroken. This pane actually has to contain all the digits 1 through 9, so it must contain a 1. 1 can't be in here. It can't be there because of the triple and because of that 1. It can't be here. So it must be in one of these two. And these guys point down here and eliminate one from being there. Um, six can't be here because of the pain, just by itself. And seven can't be here, obviously, by Sudoku. And now, this is the thing that I was, that Mark was like so close to, which is that these three form a bent triple. So this is either six or seven. If it's a 6, then this, this is a 1. And if it's a 7, then this is a 1. But in either case, one of these two is a 1, which means this can't be a 1. This must be a 6. And so but when Mark did this, he, he had this whole like thing where he included this arrow and, and everything. But you can actually just get it if you do your eliminations and you spot this pointing pair here in the pane. And I know spotting pointed pairs in uh, Windoku panes is not particularly easy, <laughs> especially when you're in a state where you can't necessarily trust the trust all of the panes. But you can actually find this bent triple here and resolve that this cannot be a one. Uh, in fact, if this was a one, then this would be a seven, this would be a six, and there's no candidate left for here. So this is a six, and that is going to do the unraveling for us, because that's going to be a 1. 
Um, that's a six, that's a one or a seven. Um, it's not a sorry. That's not a one anymore. That's a six seven pair. Um, that's a one seven pair. But this can't be one because of the pain. So that's seven one. And that's going to resolve this. And now you get to the point where you see those magic two sixes in this pane. So you know that this is the broken pane. And you can work out this bottom arrow here. So this has to be one more than this. So, um, do, do, do. How did we do this? Oh, right, so that can't be 7. Let's resolve some of this first. That's a 7. That's a 2. Um, that's a 5, 7 pair. Uh, that's a 5, 2. You can just do a little bit of uh, window code here. Um, but okay, so this can't be a, a 1, obviously. It can't be a 2. Um, it could be a 3. It can't be a 4 because that would put a 5 here. It can't be a 6 because it would put a 7 here. Or also because there's 6 in the, in the box. 7 is out. Um, 8 is out because we know this pane is real. And 9 would blow up this arrow. So this is in fact a naked single 3. And that is just going to blow apart the puzzle. Um, so... Uh, da, da, da. Hopefully, this is a four. Um, ba, ba, ba. How did this go? Oh, I can resolve these by Sudoku. Um, do how did I do this? It's been a minute since I've solved this one. Um, is it these? So this has to be, well, because we know it's in a in a real pane. So one, two are out. We got three, four. Uh, five is out. Six. No, six is out because uh, of this. Seven is out. Eight is out. Or eight, 8 is out because of the thing, and 9 can't be along. An arrow stem. Uh, this could be no 1. Could have a 2 or a 3 or a 4. No 5, 6, 7. We can't have 8 because we can't put 1 there. And we can't have nine one. So this is two, three, four. There's three, four, or two, three, four. So this is at most, well, we can't make these eight because we'd have to put four in both of them. Seven is out, so it's at most six. And it can't be five. No way to make, and there's no way to make anything smaller than five of these numbers. So this must be six. Um, and the only way to make six with these two is with four two, like so. And that's going to resolve our three four here. These are six nine, and this is going to tell us the order. Do um, this is a nine to complete the pain here. Um, let's see, this is the part where I show everyone how bad I am at spotting the obvious stuff that should be completely obvious to everyone. Um, this is six, seven, nine. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna not use that if I can get away with it. Uh, yeah, this can't be 6 or 9, so this is 7, and that is going to give us 7s all the way around the grid, just with hidden singles here. Um, do, 
and that can't be six. So it's gonna give us that. This is gonna be five and eight. If we can resolve. And now it's just more or less filling in numbers. Um, we've done kind of all of the super tricky parts. This is six and nine again, which we can resolve. Um, and this is five and eight, which we cannot yet resolve. Um, let's see. These are three, four, Five and eight. Whoo! So no five there, uh, and no five there. So five has to go there. Um, ba do do. Five is in there. Uh, da -da. What was going on here again? Oh, I should be able to fill that one in because uh, of this box. So this is two, three, and eight. So this this one is four. Four. Uh, that's an eight. This is four and one, three, six, and six has got to be there. Um, do. do, do. Nines, yeah, nine in this box has to be here, and then in this box has to be here, and then over here it's going to be there. So that's all the nines. Um, do, do, do what else? That can't be three. This can't be two. This is three or eight, but it can't be eight, so that's that. And one, two, three. So this has to be eight to complete the column. We've got five and two left in here, so two and three. Five. That's going to resolve our five eight over here. Uh, this is either three or four because these two have to be the same number. Um, and then we can complete the column here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, This needs one, one and eight. So we got that. Uh, one must go here now, four must go here. So that's these resolved. Resolving the three, one here, and this has to be a three. And that is the puzzle. So hopefully you can see that uh, kind of, you don't necessarily, I can see why one would want to kind of do a coin flip on the eights and nines here, um, but there is actually kind of a, a neat way of going through it, and I really, I really liked the spiral logic, and I think in my next, what, whatever I'm setting next, I'm going to be trying to do something a little bit similar, but hopefully hopefully with less distracting elements to kind of like be like, oh, you know, it's, it has to be this other thing and, and kind of just allow the solver to focus in. And this is only my second puzzle ever, so uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that I can make cooler stuff later.
and uh, to Mark and Simon, especially Mark, for giving this a try. Thank you so much for uh, featuring my puzzle, and uh, I look forward to watching more stuff later. Anyway, that's all. Thank you. Bye.